Hi guys. Uh, for writing this week, we are going to continue working with poetry. This is your first assignment in writing for the week. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it today. And today we're going to be working with and talking about some of the poems we've already read. So just for a quick refresher, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reread these poems. Um, if you have them in front of you and want to read them by yourself, that's fine. You can just skip ahead or if you want to follow along as I read, that's fine too. Um, but I'm just going to reread these poems really quick. So on page 36, 37, 38, and 39, we're going to reread all four of those poems. I'm only going to read them once. So follow along if you need to, pause and re-listen if you need to, whatever works best for you. Uh, first, we're going to start with September by John Updike. The breeze tastes of apple peel. The air is full of smells to feel. Ripe fruit, old footballs, drying grass, new books, and blackboard chalk in class. The bee, his hive, well-honeyed hums, while mother cuts chrysanthemums. Like plates washed clean with suds these days, are polished with a morning haze. So that's our poem, September. Next, I'm going to read the poem, The Sea, by Deborah Chandra. Clutching at the rocky cliffs, the discontented sea slides slowly back into itself on slippery hands and knees. Gripping with its long green arms, it hugs the grainy sand, searching for a finger hold to climb out on dry land. Next poem is Porchlight, also by Deborah Chandra. At night, the porchlight catches moths and holds them trapped and flapping in a tight yellow fist. Only when I turn the switch will it loosen its hot grip. And the last one, Child Frightened by a Thunderstorm by Ted Kozer. Thunder has nestled in the grass all night and rumpled it with its outstretched wings and has crushed the peonies. Its beak was bright, sharper than garden shears, and, clattering, it snipped bouquets of branches for its bed. I could not sleep. The thunder's eyes were red. Okay, so those are the four poems we're going to be talking about today. Um, and specifically, we're going to be talking about their form. Form is something that makes a poem a poem. We've talked a little bit about how, um, like, rhyming doesn't necessarily make a poem a poem because not all poems rhyme. But form is something that can turn a poem or a piece of writing into a poem. Um, there's lots of different types of forms. One of the cool things about poetry is there's not a specific form you always have to write in. Like when we write paragraphs, we have to write our introduction sentence, the meat of our sandwich in the middle, and then a conclusion sentence. There's kind of a formula that goes with writing paragraphs. Poetry is pretty cool because you don't necessarily have to have that. You can write it in a lot of different ways. We're going to explore that a little bit this week. Um, but today specifically, I want to just focus on these four. Um, and there's a word that's going to help us to kind of talk about these that um, can help describe the different parts, and that's the word stanza, S-T-A-N-Z-A, -A, stanza. Um, if you look at September in particular, September is broken into four stanzas, and the stanzas refer to the parts of the pro poem. So, for example, if you're looking at September with me right now, you'll see that the first part, the breeze tastes of apple peel, the air is full of smells to feel, that's one stanza. And then our second stanza, ripe fruit, old footballs, drying grass, new books and blackboard chalk in class, that's our second stanza, the second part of it. Some poems, like Child Frightened by a Thunderstorm, is only really one stanza, but it's written in a little bit longer form. So that's something just to kind of be aware of as we talk about this. Um, and so my first discussion question for you guys that you'll go and answer in Seesaw here in just a second is, what do you notice about how these poems look on the page? Now, I'm not looking for you to say they're made up of words or they're written different. I want you to be a little bit more descriptive and describe to me how they're different than regular writing. What's different about them? Particularly the form, not necessarily the rhyming, not necessarily the funny words they use or anything like that. The form and how they look on the page. What do you notice about it? Okay. So you're going to write at least one if not two complete sentences. Complete sentences start with a capital letter, they end with a period. They have at least three words in the middle, if not more. You guys are in fifth grade, you should be writing complete sentences. I should not be continuing to have to ask this of you guys, okay? One complete sentence at least. Okay, if you want to go ahead and pause, go into that question now you can, or you can wait. Next question. In what ways do these poems look similar? 
Okay, so you can either pick two to compare or you can kind of think about all four of them. Um, but what about them is similar? So that's one complete sentence telling me about how they're similar. If you're going to talk about a specific poem or specific poems, please write the names of the poems instead of just saying, well, the first one and the third one, blah, 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 blah. Tell me the names of the poems, okay? Um, you should have your student writing handbook with you. You should be able to do that. Um, I'm also going to attach to the assignment pictures of the poems, so you should have access to them. The next question, in what ways do they look different? This one I would like two complete sentences on. Differences are a little bit easier to tell than similarities, and you guys are in fifth grade, so I would like two complete sentences tell me, telling me about what ways they look different. Not how they're different, not, not, and not talking about, well, one of them's about the sea and one of them's about a thunderstorm. Not what I'm looking for. Specifically the form, how they look on the page, okay? Um, so, looking at specifically the stanzas of the poems, okay? What do you know about the stanzas in each of these poems? That's four sentences, one sentence for each poem talking about the stanzas and particularly what you notice about just that poem stanzas, okay? Are they short? Are they long? Do they rhyme? Are they, what, do they sound a certain way? Things like that, that's kind of the answers that I'm looking for. I want four complete sentences for that last question, okay? Now, you have an assignment to complete as well. After you answer these questions, which shouldn't take too long, your assignment is I'm going to attach to this um, assignment a website. I would like you to go to that website. It is it's kid safe, it's friendly. Um, I would like you to go to that website and I want you to find two poems with different forms. So they should not look the same. Two poems with different forms. I would like you to screenshot each of them. If the poem's too long to fit in the screenshot, that's totally fine. Just give me the first part of it so that I can kind of see the form myself. Um, and then I would like you to write at least three sentences comparing the form of the poem. So that might be one sentence about how they're similar, two about how they're different, two about how they're similar, one about how they're different. It's totally up to you. At least three sentences comparing the two poems you picked. If you can't get the pictures, your screenshots, and the Seesaw assignment to all submit at the same time, you can just send me an email with the pictures in them um, and then respond to the question on the email and I'll know that those are the poems that you're talking about. But I would like you to find two different poems with different forms and write three sentences to compare them, okay? So that's your quick assignment. And then I would like you to also try to do um, at least 10 minutes of writing time today. Your writing time options are listed on the Seesaw assignment, so go check those out. You can do that in Google Docs and share it with me. You can do that directly in the Seesaw assignment. You can type, you can handwrite in a journal and send me a picture, but I would like to see picture proof um, that you're getting a little bit of writing done. We're still kind of exploring poetry at this point, but eventually we're going to turn into writing poetry. And so now's a good time to be brainstorming different ideas of things that you could write about. Um, maybe there's some poems you've read in the past that you really enjoy um, that you can kind of take inspiration from. Um, work on some of the assignments I gave you guys last week as far as like sensory details, personification, um, rhyming, things like that. You can be working on those things in this um, short writing time that you have, okay? So, excuse me, um, that's your assignment for today. I wish you the best of luck. If you have any questions, please send me an email, and I will do my best to respond. I miss you guys.